What is there one thing you want to see this offense get better at this this season? No, I think we're trying to get better in everything we do. We're trying to get better the way we uh, run the football, the way that we protect, the way we throw, our efficiency. You know, that's what you do every year. Defense will have to try to get better, and you know, the way we do things on special teams. That's you know, that's all just part of it. And uh, you know, this is the next step right here is going down on an OTAs. Did you get better at the last two days specifically? Well, I think if you know you look at what the program, how the offseason schedule with you know phase one and conditioning, um, you know you try to work, you try to lift, you try to install the stuff that you want to start doing. Phase two allows you to start working some of those techniques that you'll be using, um, and, and then the OTA, the practice part of it, allows you to try to go out there and and, and use it to, to some degree. Uh, you know, against, uh, you know, teammates and how we practice. And so some of the run game stuff I don't think is going to really translate. You know, certainly uh, emphasis on throwing the ball and then protecting against live bodies and, you know. So I think that's we. I thought we were more urgent today. I'm glad you guys weren't here yesterday. Um, but I thought that there was a sense of urgency to, to get in and out of the huddle, to communicate, to get lined up. Uh, so I think from that standpoint, it was pretty functional. Where have you seen improvement from Malik so far in the offseason program, and what and what all does he need to show you to earn a, earn a bigger role? Well, we're only going to play one quarterback. Yeah. Yep. So a bigger role um, it is going to be. We're all they're all they're all trying to earn a starting position uh, on every spot at every spot, trying to earn a role. Um, but what we'd ask Malik to do is come back with a presence to him. You know, making sure that you know when you're the you know. The quarterback in, in 32 NFL franchises, there's a certain demeanor or the way you have to carry yourself and a presence and, you know, a leadership. And there's a lot that goes into that other than just delivering the football. You have to be really good at delivering the football and being accurate and making great decisions with it and, and making sure that it goes where it's supposed to go. Uh, and, and I felt like he did that. He came back and, um, you know, was into it. And, um, you know, there was certainly a bounce to him and he's continued to do that. And, just early on in the in the evaluation process, but that, with, that's what he's done. With that quarterback room, like how have you seen? Obviously, it's only been you know so long, but how have you seen like that foundation being set for that fair competition between everyone and that just you know no one backstabbing? They're trying to help each other, but also make each other better. Well, I mean, I would imagine that that's gone on, you know, since I would hope since I've been here. You know, I mean that we're gonna we're gonna try to provide competition at each and every spot. And um, the players understand that. That's our role. That's, that's what we have to do as an organization. And I think that they, you know, at each position, you know, kind of figure that out and, and understand that they, when they take a, you know, when they, it's their turn to give an, a rep or an opportunity, uh, that everybody else is encouraging them and, and also, you know, still trying to compete with them. So I, I don't think that that's ever been an issue. Some kind of role in it for you. It doesn't seem to generally, but when you after the draft, you automatically say, you know, Will's third. That's because Malik's been here, right? So how does that kind of? No, I just that's where you know things were going to start off. You got to have some sort of order uh, when you have three players at one position, whether that be an outside linebacker or a running back. You know, so. We're just we're going to evaluate them each and every day and continue to, to coach them and then you know got a long process go you know, ahead. Does the new third quarter emergency quarterback rule make you reevaluate keeping three quarterbacks in the future as opposed to? Uh, I think what we'll have to do is keep the best in the right fifty-three. I mean, however, that shakes out, um, you know, based on where we're at uh, when we get to the end of August. So, you know. If you keep three quarterbacks or you put a quarterback on the active roster on Saturday afternoon and put him on the 53, then he can dress until the other two guys allegedly get hurt. Mike, they also approved the rule today on the fair catch on kickoffs. Uh, you're on the competition committee. What's your thoughts? Is it uh, Does it help with the safety of the game, or is it more of a uh, – Well, we haven't done it, so I couldn't tell you if it's going to help. They did vote on it but, today. No, I, I know. Okay. Teresa, I know. Just let me finish here, and I'm – I'll do my best to answer your question. I don't know if it's going to help with the safety because we haven't done it. The hope is uh, that, that it will 
limit, you know, the concussions that that occur on that play. You know, that's a highly. Uh, if you just look at the percentages, you know, and you know, do you track them? And and again, we understand that that there's going to be some injuries involved in in professional football and football at all levels. We're just trying to mitigate those risks. You know, the average starting position after a kickoff was a 25.3. So. You know, I get there's going to be some arguments against it. There's going to be a lot of arguments for it. Uh, I think it's a one-year trial, and, and we'll go from there. Elijah Molden's been dealing with injuries, you know, since he's gotten here, but said he's kind of figured things out this offseason in terms of how to manage that. Just what do you see his role being? And he mentioned versatile, too. He wants to be more versatile. In yeah, we've actually played him in the back part of the field a little bit, and I think that'll be good for him. It, it'll, it'll help him. Um, you know, expand that role and expand his his versatility. I'm sure, they can easily come down and play play a nickel. And you know, he was our PP on the punt team today. So, those are those are three valuable roles for for a young defensive player. And you know, we need we need every player that we can get out there healthy and and, and being able to use that versatility. How long have you considered Mike uh, Elijah being back there? Um. You know, we've talked about it. You know, we've talked about it in the off season and just where we may need some some depth and what might him. You know, if you're playing, you know, substituted defense, you know, first different personnels where you may want players. We've played Amani at nickel. We've played Elijah at nickel. We've played a lot of guys in there, and you know, it's more or less to try to give him another role um, outside of uh, just a nickel, or maybe we're in a game where we're playing a lot of base defense and. And you need um, a, a safety. You know? So instead of just having them always just be in the be in a corner conversation, it figured it would translate from the nickel back to safety. I know you did uh, this drainage system on on that field last year, and now, Are, did you ever give any thought to making one of these fields turf to match what's going in Nissan? And, and is there any validity to the idea of practicing sometimes on what you play in outdoor? Uh, we give a lot, a lot of thought to a lot of different things, and I would say that I thought of most of those things that you just brought up. Mike, when you have a, why why you did you decide that? Don't stop for him, Ben. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when you have a leader uh, like Kevin Byard, who who isn't here, I mean, obviously voluntary, but did you keep in keep in touch with him, uh, kind of see what he's doing to kind of keep abreast with how he's? Yeah. Saw so him at the golf course on Sunday. Looks great. Had a great conversation. Uh, so that was fun. I would expect him to be here at OTAs. At... I would expect him at some point in time, yeah. How about Christian Bolton? Coach, is he here? Or... Nope. Okay. Aaron Brewer has a new role this year, obviously. Mike, how have you seen him not only transition into center, but also just as a leader? Sure, the leadership, I think, is important. I mean, you guys all know Ben. You know how much you know Ben meant to this organization, this franchise, to me personally, as the teammates. And so, you know, that it, Brew has to lead, and, and we all know that that center is critical. You know, being being the the, the the keystone of that that offensive line, and being able to lead in his own way, and not try to be bad and have those conversations. And you know, I think he's off to a good start. You know, it's not perfect, but you could see his energy, his enthusiasm, and you, know, you hear him out there talking to guys and making checks. So, um, you know, I think he. We're off to a good start, but it's early on. Why isn't practicing on the same stuff you'll play on something that you thought to be worth? I, 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 ha I told you I have thought about it. I said everything that you mentioned I've thought about. Well, why, why did you decide not to do it? Because um, you know, we can always just go to the stadium if we need to be on turf or, or the turf in the bubble. So yeah, for uh, for Tart uh, being out there today, still not signed, but, but going out there and, and going with you guys, he – show you anything in that regard? Um, no, I mean, I think that Tart's working hard. I think he's you know, trying to, to continue to do the things that we're asking him to do and continue to, to grow as a, as a impactful, um, disruptive, productive defensive lineman, work on his conditioning and his health and his technique. And, you know, this is good. This, this, this passing camp is good. He can work on body control and pass rush and um, – you know, saw some of those things today, which is which is good. Coach, now that you have the majority of the team out there on the field together, what what specifically are you looking for the next couple of weeks to take those next steps as you get closer? To the well, I just it's the operation. 
you know, at this point in time, it's the conditioning. It's how we, it's how we're able to 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 compete against each other, stay off the ground, you know, stay away from the quarterback, avoid collisions. A lot of that is this time of year is just being able to to know how to practice, how to practice with speed without pads on, and, and explaining that to to the rookies and understanding that. Um, that's a critical develop, you know, for us to be able to evaluate them is how they can function and, and go out there and play and practice when we don't have, have pads on. How have the rookies done this week? So well, I mean, I think that they've, they've uh, adjusted well. I think um, I didn't have a chance to watch the, the end part there, but, you know, we'll see how that seven on seven looked. And I think you're seeing guys getting lined up. You're not seeing the quarterback having to stop or get guys on the other side. And, you know, so they've worked hard. Uh, to try to figure out where they're supposed to be and, you know, continue to develop um, a role and, and working hard on special teams. How has Andre Diller settled in here with the new organization and, and just the way that he's adapting in that O-line room? Well, I mean, I think, you know, there's some new faces in there. And so, you know, that takes time. But, uh, you know, we're off to a good start and continuing to grow. And, you know, we'll keep coaching these guys as, as hard as they'll allow us. And you know, that, that cohesion up front is critical. You know, with those five guys, and you hear the D line communicating and talking, and you know you, the O line has to be able to do the same thing and, and work as a unit. Chris, it was almost very complimentary about the the program and kind of the mindset here, and said specifically he was impressed how welcoming the building was. How important is that to you, and how much can that relationship start help guys get involved and build the culture you want? Well, I mean, I think we're always trying to. You know, there's a fine line between building a, a relationship and making a connection, you know, with these guys, and then also holding them accountable. And I think that that's the one thing that I've tried to do um, since I've been here is to make sure that everybody is respected and make sure that everybody uh, respects the people that work here uh, and that helps us, you know, help us all do our jobs and do them efficiently. Uh, Chris has been a great ex addition, He's a professional. He knows where to be, uh, knows what to do, compete. Um, so we're happy to have him, and I'm glad that he's, you know, recognized, uh, you know, the, the 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 program or the culture that we've put in place here. Tim was talking through some of the wide receivers and saying, you know, you can see what they do in their best work. You know, pointed to Nick in in Washington and some of the other guys' best games. And just wondering if you look at the flip side of that as as a danger, you know. Nick Nick did that had that great game in Washington, but there was another game where he dropped a couple balls and you came in upset with him. And if it's important to look at the total body of work or the mean as as what you've gotten out yeah, of Yeah, and I think just the looking at when you look at any player or you evaluate, you know, what is the reason, what is the reason for the mistake? Um, you know, trying to just get below the surface and you know, was it just a drop? Was it a focus? Was it you know a timing issue, you know, when you talk about a receiver or why did a player make, uh, miss a tackle, you know, is it, you know, was it technique or was the guy just better? Um, so I, I think that, you know, we, we can look at to the positives. Uh, certainly, you know, want to coach and, and correct the things that, you know, weren't, weren't very good. Um, what we call the good, the bad, and the stuff to get you beat. So, um, when you look at it good, I think it's just being able to reinforce what they're capable of doing. But then, you know, we have to eliminate some of the some of the mistakes that are made or, you know, if you're talking about receivers, making sure that they're playing to their strengths and what their route craft is and, you know, that we're, we're making sure that we're asking them to do things that they can do. Who's in Charles London taking part in the coach yeah. accelerator program? How good opportunities that for them and what do you hope they take from it? Well, I hope they take advantage of the opportunity. I hope they go up there and they show – Show everyone involved, uh, their personality, their uh, make a connection with those potential, you know, men and women that are going to be making the hiring. Those are two valuable people of our staff, and we've got much more deserving um, people as well. But the NFL had decided to make it, um, you know, I think maybe a little smaller than last year, and then really wanted to have uh, some of the the people that that went there last year come back. I think that was part of their you know program. We we had we nominated as many people that we felt like were deserving, uh, but then ultimately they're the ones that decide and, you know, happy for Charles and, and, and Tony and text them in the morning each and every morning and just said, hey, we miss you, but, you know, make sure that you guys do a great job up there and, and, and present yourselves the, the way that you want everybody to see you.
How much do you look forward to seeing um, Peter out here when he gets a chance to go up against like Jeff? I mean, as a coach, do you look forward to that moment? Well, they don't have pads on, you know what I mean? But I think that this is a great opportunity for, you know, any young player that, you know, sees, you know, a veteran player that they've watched on TV or they've seen in the Pro Bowl or they've seen have a lot of success. And, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of, you know, something that may go down the inside of their pant leg the first or second time, but they'll get over it. You know what I mean? Like, they, it, that's part of this game and the learning process, and we've all been there. And, you know, Jeff's, Jeff's bark is a lot worse than his bite. I told him, don't worry about it. They'll, they'll be fine. But – and then you see Jeff encouraging these guys and coming into the offense. I mean, he knows how to practice, and I, we're very thankful and appreciative of the effort that he goes, and we got to, you know, take care of him. He plays a lot of snaps for us, but – you know, it's good that these guys can go against him and Tier and Arden and all these guys and hopefully pretty soon, you know, Harold and, you know, try to make each other better. Gentry, go ahead. I know you've been waiting. Yeah, Mike, uh, KB's always been a guy with such high buy-in to what you're trying to do here. And how concerning is it to you when, when that guy, you know, isn't here right now? No, I mean, there's been, there's been years where KB hasn't been here. You know what I mean? I know KB's working hard and we're staying in contact with him and, you know, book meets with him on Zoom and get the installation. And, I mean, if we're concerned about KB and his level of fitness and commitment, um, that, that's, that's not a concern. I mean, he has a family and he's an established player and we would want them all here, but it's voluntary. And there were, I told these guys, there were years where I didn't go to New England. And you know, communicate and he's communicated. And so I'm, I'm very, very confident that, you know, when KB comes back, He'll be in shape, and he'll be ready to go, and he'll know what to do, and he'll be the same great teammate that he always is. A talk from the players about a little bit more up-tempo here in the offseason so far. Kind of, can you tell us what you can uh, about that and, and you know, why that might be important and you know, kind of what you're looking to accomplish? Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that, that we're as efficient as we can be, okay, whether you want to call it tempo, um, playing fast, whatever it may be. We want to make sure that, we, that we're uh, efficient, uh, efficient in how I communicate with the quarterbacks, efficient in how the quarterbacks communicate with, with the line of scrimmage, at the line of scrimmage, um, and really try to take as much thinking out of it as possible. We want our guys to be able to go up there and, and play fast, and, uh, and I think all that starts with, with really the communication portion of it. What's the growth track been like for Malik Willis this offseason? Obviously, you're changing the offense, but you're also asking him to change kind of the style he plays. Uh, yeah, you know, with Malik, he's done a great job of doing everything that we've asked him to do. Um, he's come in, he's put in the time, he's put in extra work, uh, studying our offense, studying defensive football. Um, Malik's done a great job of, of doing all that. And, and as far as changing, you know, how he plays, I don't, I don't know if that's a, a fair thing to say. He's got such a unique skill skill set, and um, you know, when when he's out there and he's playing fast, you can really see those those traits flourish. So, uh, we want to make sure that that as we do with everybody, we want to continue to put our guys in in positions and spots to where they can go out and they they can execute and they can play to their strengths. That said, knowing you want him to develop, and you still you have a rookie now in Levis that you have to develop. How do you go about distributing the, the reps and getting Tannehill ready in your new offense as well? Yeah, um, you know that that's. Uh, a big part of our job, especially at this time of year. So um, our guys, again, in the classroom, going through all the work up until this point have been good, uh, learning, asking questions to one another, um, asking questions to Charles, to J.O., to myself, who, who, whoever, uh, you know, can help them out with the answer. Um, and, and as far as developing, you know, Malik, he's, he's you know, yesterday came out here and, and did a good job executing on, on the opportunities, opportunities that he got. And so each day we're, we're going to look to do the same thing there. With him being the most different of the, of the three, do you have special stuff built for him? Uh, I mean, we're going to have special things built for, for all of our people that have unique skill sets, whether that's Traylon or whether that's Ryan or whether that's Derek, you know, Chig, the Kyle. You, you have a, a list of players that um, all, all provide different, you know, skills and, and, and can provide different advantages if we do a good job of using them properly. Things you like about Levis coming in, and maybe what are some of the early things he needs to, to hone in on as he starts his career? Sure. Um, obviously, the physical traits. Um, you know, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. He's got a good release, um, quick release. Uh, he's very smart. Um, so, you know, he's he's done a good job being able to come in, and, and we've thrown a lot at him early on. 
Um, and like any rookie, right, he's, he's learning how to be a pro, and, and there's different challenges that go along with that. But Will's done a good job of, of being able uh, to put in the time, put in the work, and, and really come and, and do things the way that we want him to do it. Do you have enough at receiver right now? Yeah. When it comes to Traylon Burks, he had mentioned him, kind of you taking him under his wing last year as a rookie. How have you seen his growth, and, and what do you see in terms of his potential this season? Yeah, uh, ultimately, we, we want to see Traylon out there playing fast. Uh, again, I, I know kind of the, the theme has been the tempo and all that or whatnot, but being able to go out there and play fast and, and again, eliminate the thinking and let him go and do what he does best. Be big, be strong, you know, play strong with the ball in his hands, go be physical. Um, and, and, you know, he's done a great job of that. Obviously, we've only been playing football, really, against the defense for a day, but uh, everything that he's displayed so far, uh, throughout the coaching sessions and, and obviously yesterday, um, he's done a good job doing that. Once you take I over this right. offense, how much room is there for growth for the running back position in the passing game? Yeah, uh, you know, there, there's obviously growth there. Um, and again, a lot of it comes back to, to what's going to be best for us. Um, what players are going to be on the field that, that are going to allow us to, to take advantage of different mismatches and different opportunities. Um, and, and again, similar to, to the different players that we've already talked about. Obviously, there's different guys with different skill sets back there. Um, you mentioned Kyle. Obviously, last year we didn't get to see a lot of him based, based on the injuries. Uh, how much of a weapon can he be and how different is he maybe than than most of your offensive weapons? Yeah, uh, you know, Kyle's, Kyle's got a, a good feel for, for running routes, winning his routes, um, being able to utilize his short air quickness. You know, you see similar traits with Mason Kinsey, his ability to play inside of the formation, um, you know, be able to get into different matchups, uh, you know, with, with different types of players inside. So, uh, you know, all those guys, is, especially that kind of fit that mold, um, are going are gonna to allow us uh, to be able to take advantage of different matchups if the opportunity presents themselves. Is there different uh, in regards to installation and such? Or some are easier, some are harder? Uh, so far, how have you felt that everybody's adapted to this as you've gone along? Um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been pleased. Uh, again, we, we've, I think we had whatever it was, 20 snaps of football yesterday. So, uh, you know, as, as the installation starts to build, uh, hopefully I, I still feel the same way. But again, the, the, the work ethic that the guys are showing coming in every day and, and learning, and um, we, we, we haven't really, you know, pulled any punches. We've been giving them everything and, and seeing what they can retain, seeing what they can handle. Um, and so far, things have been good. What are your thoughts on Skaronski and uh, Dillard and, and kind of going back and forth between those two? Do, do you have a plan as to, you know, Given so many reps to one, so many reps to the other. Yeah, you know, just like every other position on, on our on our team, um, it's going to be all about you know the competition and figuring out which group of guys up front is going to give us the best chance to be successful. Tim, with this offense, how is it? Is it something where you came in and re overhauled everything? Is it more tweaks and, and just you know working around the edges and trying to get improvement with the personnel on hand? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a complete overhaul. I mean, obviously there's this, this program. Uh, has done a lot of really good things offensively throughout the year. So, uh, you know, just like we talked about whenever the last time I talked to you guys was, it was it's, it's going to be about make sure that we're accentuating the things that we do well and being able to make minor adjustments to, to some of the areas where we need to improve in. What's the most difficult part so far for the players? You mentioned how quickly they're coming along. But what do you see being the most difficult part in this process as you're starting to get everybody back? Um, yeah, you know, I, again, I, I, I've... I feel like it would be unfair for me to give that answer right now just because th there's such a small sample size. Um, you know, once we start getting going and once they, they, they get in a good shape and, and they're really running out there and, and playing fast, and I, I think we'll have a better uh, measure as to where they're at, really. Uh, but like I said, I'm pleased with how yesterday went. Last year, last year uh, before he got hurt, there was a sense of excitement and buildup around Racy McMath. Where does he stand now? Yeah, I mean, I think he stands with everybody in that room who's, who's coming. I mean, he's been here every day, and he's been running. They've all been running, and they've been doing a great job trying to build chemistry um, with Ryan, with Malik, and then over the past you know week or so with Will. Um, so he's, he's been out here uh, every single day putting in the time, and, and he looks great running. Have you gotten discernibly faster on offense, which was a theme? Um, I mean, yeah, if we can go, and again, some of it comes into uh, our ability to go out and execute and, and play to their to their speed, whether it, that's a 4-4, four, four, a 4-6, four, whatever. Our job as coaches is to make sure that those guys are playing as fast as they can 
and, and making sure that they're playing as efficiently as, as possible. And, and um, we're in the process of doing that. But again, I think we're off to a good start. How's Chris Moore fitting? Chris Moore's doing a great job. Uh, obviously, I have some experience with him uh, with our time back in Houston. Uh, he's a pro. He comes in every day. He prepares. He works. He runs. Um, and, and he's been a good addition to the room. Tim, you mentioned competition on that offensive line. So is it accurate to say that Andre and Peter are competing at left tackle? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that, that everybody up front right now is competing for a job. You know what I mean? So it, we've got a long time until we play our first game. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to figure out which five is going to give us the best chance to win. Why do you feel comfortable that you have enough at receiver? Because I've seen these guys play. Um, I've seen these guys make plays in, in big games. You want to talk about Nick Westbrook, you can go watch the Washington Redskins or the Commanders film, excuse me, last year when he went up and, and made a huge play for us. Uh, you want to talk about Kyle Phillips, you can go and watch the New York Giants film when, when he, he caught a play or uh, a blowout at the end of the two minute drive to put us in position to win the game. You want to talk about Traylon Burks, you can go ahead and watch the Cincinnati Bengals game when he went up over the top on that deep ball. I mean, there's examples. You can uh, turn on the Cowboys game and go watch Racy. You can watch all the catches that Chris had. There's enough examples of all these guys making plays at this level. It's just our job to make sure that we can get them to do it consistently. You watch the best film of every guy and envision that. I mean, I think you, you watch. You're talking about their games yeah. where Nick was dropping balls, where where Racy, you know, has four career catches or something like that. There's a lot of film that doesn't show what you're talking about. So what's the question there? So, so is it your strategy or your philosophy that you look at the best film and envision that's what a guy is? Yeah, uh, you know, different than, than than some people. Obviously, you know, focusing on the negative is, is is no way to kind of go through life. So we don't really want to do that, Paul. We want to make sure that we're doing a good job of of helping our guys go out there and reach their potential. And again, I think as you turn on the tape, you're able to see these guys make plays, and and and, and it's at the highest level of competition. So. I've got to do a good job. Our position coaches have to do a good job of making sure that we're able to put those guys in positions consistently to where they can go and win. What about the tight end position? You know, you already you already have Chig, now you add mm -hmm. Josh Wiley. How excited are you to have a couple guys that, you know, could do so many things within your offense? Yeah, uh, you know, that, that's a uh, – uh, in this offense, it's a tough position to learn because we're going to ask them to do a lot. They're involved in the run game. They're involved in pass protection. They're involved in, in getting out in the pass game um, and, and having, having players, again, with versatile skill sets that we can go out there and ask them to do multiple things in a line of different positions uh, is, is only going to help their, their value and, and help us get them on the field on Sundays. You mentioned the offensive line, but you didn't mention NPF. How has he progressed? from his rookie season to what you've seen so far? I mean, he's, I mean, I think you guys will see him when he comes out of here. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's playing with more confidence. Um, and again, I think that's fair to say about most of these second year players now that they know what, the, what it means to be a pro and, and what our expectations are and what our standards are here. Uh, but Nick's had a good, a good however many weeks since he's been here. Um, and, and we're looking to see that, that growth continue. As a compliment to Derek, and maybe what, what, is, what can he bring new to this offense that it hasn't had? Yeah, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that we haven't had it, uh, but they, they, have, they have totally different skill sets. Obviously, you just look at them walking side by side, and I think that's pretty clear to see. Um, but no, Tajay's done a good job coming here, and, and again, with as much as we put on them, and, and you know, obviously running the ball and pass protection, and then being able to take advantage of his skill set to be able to go and win one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups. Um, he's done a good job, so hopefully he can put another good day together and we can continue to grow. Been like seeing Harold, I, I don't know at what stage he is right now, but just the fact that he is you know, kind of back, presumably, uh, you know, working out and so forth. Oh, is that yeah, it's fresh? good. It's good to have him back. I mean, anytime those guys go through injuries like that during the season, they kind of drift off, drift away, go get their surgeries and rehab, and we're so consumed with everything going on uh, week to week. Um, it's hard to really stay connected to those guys. So now having him here working, I know he's going to be working as hard as anybody to get back out there. Um, been a long process for him here leading up to this point. And he's in meetings. He's back in, involved with the guys and around. So it's great to have him. I know it's a case-by-case case basis, but there's a bit of a cautionary tale with ACL returns here with what we saw from Bud on the other side of the ball with Juan and Conklin first year back has been kind of a, a trial. What, what kind of – do you talk to a guy about – like the expectations coming back from that. Yeah, I think you said it. I mean, I think all of them are case by case. It has a lot to do with the injury, how severe, the extent of it. Um, everybody kind of heals differently from that stuff. I think the mindset's a big part of it. Uh, whenever these guys are coming back, just where their mind's at, obviously taking that first hit, whatever that might be, um, the confidence they have in that ACL 
uh, repair as they get back to it. Um, but the expectation for Harold, man, is just do everything you can to get as healthy, as strong as you can possibly be. Stay engaged with us meeting-wise, and he's always been smart. He's always been able to handle everything we've asked of him. Um, and then just be ready to go, and we got to really take it based on what he says. Like, it's up to Harold ultimately um, with where he's at and as things progress, and we'll kind of see where he is as we get going. Shane. At the end of last season, that he had had the surgery and he felt like that would cause his speed to return. How's he looked thus far? Coming back? Yeah, he's working his way back right now. So, I mean, he's a meeting, he's, he's doing stuff, but um, he continues to work with Todd and our training staff to, to do things to get himself ready to go. And whenever he's a, a, available to us to get back out here and do some things, he will be. I know Kevin wasn't initially at, at OTA. I don't know if he, if he is there or not, but. Uh, I guess uh, you know, how much of an absence if if he's not here, you know, does that mean for leadership? And yeah, I, uh, obviously he's he's a huge part of what we do here. He, um, he's been our leader, him along with Jeff, Harold, some of these guys that have played a ton of snaps for us. They're reliable, they're dependable in all aspects of what it takes to play at this level at a high level. Um, so, again, like it's a business. We all understand that. Um, everybody has a different way about how they train in the off season. It's no, no secret. Some guys do things differently. Some guys are here. Some guys aren't. It's not just Kevin, you know. So um, he's a big part of what we do. I will say, I think for the young guys, they miss it, you know. Like I have, I have zero, zero doubt that Kevin Byer is not going to be ready to go when he gets here, right. He's, he works his butt off. He does everything the right way. He's a pro's pro. Um, he knows what we do schematically. He communicates. I think, really, for me, it's the uh, it's the leadership that those young guys see, and they're, they're going to learn pretty quickly what Kevin Byard is and why he's so successful the moment he steps in this door. Um, but I mean, it's part of the business, you know. It's part of the league. Some guys here, some aren't, and I have no doubt Kevin's going to be ready to go when he does walk through that door. Yep. Feel comfortable that he's in a good spot with the team? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think so. I have no, I have no reservations about Kevin. When it comes to Christian Fulton um, and just kind of the, the injuries he dealt with throughout the season, what was the importance that you stressed going into the off season for him? Because it looks like he's been doing a lot of different workouts. I don't know where he is or he's yeah. here now, but can you can. Explain yeah, that? I, I, he looks, he looks good. He looks bigger. He looks stronger. He looks healthier. It's a big year for Christian. He knows it. We know it. Um, going into the final year of his deal. So I, I would expect him to put his best foot forward to do everything he can to be out there. Um, it's tough to produce. It's tough to eventually earn a contract if you're not out there doing it. So everything he can preventative-wise to get himself ready to go where he can last 17 games, 18 games, whatever it might end up being for us. What did you think about Aziz before he got here and maybe one of your early impressions been of him? Uh, yeah, he, uh, he's a pro. Like you can tell, he's he understands football. He's passionate about football. Um, he's a leader. You hear him talking to the younger guys. You hear him talking to the unit. Um, very, very excited about him and what he's going to add to our defense. What's and May and June. Been like for the DBs and what's that bring Great. Out? I'm extremely excited to add Chris. Um, the energy you feel it every single minute from him. Um, I think just his perspective on the back end. Some different things, schematically, technique-wise, I think it's refreshing for those guys to hear something new. Um, he's been really good for us so far, and I'm excited about where this thing goes with him here. In June, uh, leading into training camp, what are the one or two most important things you really want to accomplish right now? Yeah, I, th I think for us, like, there's a lot of competition for us defensively. There is. Maybe not at some starting spots, but in terms of our depth and everything else. So I want to see guys start to grasp what they're what we're asking them to do understanding the scheme and then find ways to separate themselves we're looking for guys who are ready to kind of take the next step and embrace the opportunity and grab hold of some of those roles that are out there right now what role do you kind of see Arden having on the defensive line and how does he change what you can do with some of the other guys up yeah there? he uh he's very versatile like he's rushed inside plays outside, he'll be on the edge for us, and then he's got the versatility to go inside if we need him to, and he's had success at both spots. So um, he's another great addition for us. His energy is contagious throughout the room. When he's when he's not here, you you know, like 
you know he's not here, whether somebody tells you or not, just because you don't feel his presence. Um, I think he's got a good rapport with all the guys that we brought in and the guys that are here, that we've had here. So I'm excited about Arden. I think there's a lot of big things ahead of him for, here, for him here. Stay with Crow now or you're a lot thinner at defensive end. Is, is he more of a coach? Yeah, player? he's kind of went back and forth throughout his time here. Last year he was in Crow's room, you know, so he's he's been in Crow's room. We do a lot. Like when we get to some of the sub stuff, we do a lot together in there anyway. Those those four are usually all meeting together. Um, so there'll be times he's he's with Crow. There'll be times he's got to go with T for certain things that we're doing schematically. Um, but really, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of teams only have a D-line coach. They coach the edge guys and the inside guys, right? So there's a lot of similarities among them. We're all speaking the same language. When you reviewed last year, what did you not like? What are some maybe things this offseason that you were working on from the get-go to be better at? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, going back to our bye week from last year, early in the year, it was the X plays. Like, the explosive passing plays killed us. Um, that's something we got to get corrected. We got to start out the gate trying to limit those, make these offenses earn it and drive the field. Um, that's one area, continuing to enhance our pass coverage. Obviously not good enough. And we saw we saw a lot more passes than any other team. I think we were close to over 50 more passes against us than any other team, whether that's a tribute to teams wanting to throw the ball on us because they had success or us being able to stop the run. Um, but we got to continue to enhance and we got to improve our pass coverage, whether Whatever the scheme is, just our execution. Um, and with that comes the rush. Obviously, it's all tied together. Um, but that's another big area of focus for us this offseason. Do you attribute to the fact that you've had rookies like McCrary and Avery playing a lot of snaps back there at corner? Yeah, I mean, anytime you're rotating guys and playing different guys, that comes into play a little bit. I've, I've spoken on it before. The communication back there is critical. Um, I mean, we were in a unit meeting this morning. I was talking to the guys about if a D lineman messes up and they're not on the same page, you got a linebacker, a safety, a corner, somebody's usually going to make them right for a minimal game. If you ain't right in the back end, it's usually a touchdown, right? So just their, their understanding of how important having each other's backs and being on the same page and being able to execute whatever we ask of them. Obviously, but do you feel like the front four, the guys you've got there, how heavily invested you are, gives you a chance in every game, that one group? Yeah, that's the expectation. Like, they're, they're out there. Um, they're here for a reason, and it's to be disruptive, to cause havoc, and to do whatever we can to keep the other team from scoring. Right? That's our job. Um, we got exceptional, exceptional players up front. I'm excited about them. I'm excited about where this thing's going. I think we've added some really good pieces as well. Um, we just got to continue to work, continue to mesh, um, get the new guys implemented in kind of our system, what we do. But I do, I, I think we got a talented group up there. You mentioned Key and uh, Landry. What about Weaver and who may be else on this roster right now or somebody that can step up on that edge? Yeah, we've stepped up for us last year. He did a really good job when he was in there for us last year. Um, he's working his butt off right now, the same thing progressing, improving. I was talking about year one to year two, he showed improvement, right? And he was injured, I think, early year one, and now getting getting to year two to year three is time for him to take another big step. And I think he expects it of himself, and we expect it of him. Was Murphy Bunting fit in the mix for you, and, and does he push? Who's that? Murphy Bunting, and, and does he end up maybe pushing Roger inside, or, or have you made that decision? Yet? Yeah, I, I think any time we can add quality football players out there, whether they play inside, whether they play outside, the versatility is always a plus, right? When you got the flexibility to move guys based on injury or based on whoever you're possibly going up against is a plus for us. But um, having him here has been a good addition. I think just the experience, he's kind of taking a leadership in that leadership role in that room already, you know, just from being around, from playing, having success in this league. So I'm encouraged. I think the competition out there is going to be high here as we get going in OTAs and a training camp and hopefully it pushes all of them to improve. So, Craig, uh, the owners uh, approved the new rule for the fair catch. Uh, what are your thoughts on it and how can it be? Is, is it something that can help or hurt? Yeah, I mean, we just found out about it, uh, that the league just ended up approving it. So we're probably going to dig into it a little bit more. Um, you know, these next couple of days and find out what's what's really going on um, as far as all the rules are. So we'll find out here in the next couple of days of what we like and what we don't like about it.
25 though maybe yeah. be a help in some occasions? Sure, sure. Obviously, if you, if you call for a fair catch and uh, you know, you end up catching the ball, it'll start at the 25 yard line. So there's going to be a bunch of different things. You could have two returners instead of one back there. Um, there could be all different types of things, scenarios that could happen with that. So again, we'll dig into it and find out what works best for us. How does you have a place in the kickoff return game for you guys possibly? You know, it's, it's early on. Obviously, this is what the off season is for. Um, we're going to try a lot of guys out there. Um, we obviously like his skill set coming out of college. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit too early, but we're going to try him out there and see how that works. With the kickoff return being so physically violent at times, is, it, is there a beneficial aspect to having a running back doing it rather than a wide receiver or a DB? Yeah, you can look at it two different ways. A running back, obviously, is going to run it there. He's going to see gaps a little bit different than a wide receiver because the receiver's out there in space a little bit more, where a running back, um, they're going to be able to set things up a little bit more on their running style. So I don't know if it's good um, to either have a running back or a receiver. Whoever fits best is going to be back there. Cordell Patterson obviously came in as a wide receiver, and he's one of the top guys uh, to ever play it. So, um, yeah, it really doesn't really matter as far as the skill set receiver or running back. We just want to find the best guy back there. Other guys may be in the mix of both kick and punt. I know it's early. As far as returners? Yeah. Um, again, we'll off season here, we're going to try out as many guys as we possibly can. Punt returner with Kyle Phillips back there. Um, we'll try Tajay out there. It's just going to be a number of guys that are going to be back there, and we'll find out who's best um, for our team. Yeah, uh, obviously Caleb Shudak, um, he's one of the guys. Trey Wolf, we brought him in as an undrafted free agent. Those guys have been doing a really good job this offseason, and we'll let them battle it out through uh, OTAs, veteran mini camp, and then training camp, and we'll see who ends up winning. But feel really good about both of them right now. Uh, both obviously have some good strengths and some weaknesses, and we'll continue to work with them and find out who's the best for us. Looking at, the, at those guys or potentially bringing in somebody else to compete? I mean, we're, we're always looking, um, but we like what they're doing right now. Um, in fact, I think uh, both of them only missed two kicks so far this year um, as far as the offseason is concerned. So they're doing a really good job, but we'll always be looking and trying to find ways to improve our football team. And, um, you know, if Caleb or, or Trey ends up winning uh, the battle, uh, we'll be 100% behind them and see what goes on from there. What's been done differently to this offseason to find some consistency? In either the return game and the kicking game? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as the return game is, we, we just got to have someone back there who can catch the ball consistently. Um, you know, we, we tried some guys out in the past, and, uh, you know, we'll continue to work with new guys and find that out. And then once we catch the ball, I think when you look back at our, some of our stats, we do a pretty good job. When Kyle Phillips caught the very first one, he had 46 yards. We just got to continue to work with him being more consistent, obviously, of catching the ball. Um, and, and I'm sorry, your second part of your question besides the return game. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's probably the million-dollar question that everyone asks every year is, wait, what's going on with the kicker part? Um, but we're, we're continuing to look, um, just like the answer I said beforehand, of finding new competition. Uh, we thought Randy was, you know, he was 17 for 20 at 85% last year, which is, I wouldn't say it's the top, but it's, it's a pretty good average when you get up close to 85%. In that regard, how much does needing a guy who can hit from consistently from 50 plus need to be a factor? Yeah, I, you know, yeah, you can look at it that way, but I'm looking at more of the money zone from 40 to 49 yards. Um, you know, if, if we can make consistently uh, consistent kicks from there, great. 50, 50 plus, um, would also great too. But I wouldn't say that that's a major thing that we're going to be looking at. We just want to come have a guy that's going to be consistent in everything that he does. Doesn't that seem like the standards of love for for returners? You want them to catch the ball for kickers. 49 yards is your limit. Meanwhile, around the league, the kicks over 50 yards are off the charts, and catching the ball is a presumption that every team Sure. Um, I would say going on to the kicking part first, uh, I want to say 49 is our top limit. I just want our 40 to 49 to be very consistent. Um, and then with 50 plus, that's great. You're right. We got to kick field goals from 50 plus. There's no doubt about that. Um, we're really focused in on the 40 to 49 right now in the off season, and we'll continue to work with 50 or 50 plus. Going to your punt returner situation, yes, we want more than just a guy that can go and catch the ball. 
obviously that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a guy who can catch it, make a guy miss in space, get us the first first down is what we're looking for, um, and be able to break a big one. But um, as you can see from last year, we just want a guy that's back there, catch the ball, get up field, get that first first down and go. Doug House with a really great rookie season, but what are some of the things that you sent him into the offseason with and that you guys are going to continue to harp on this year? Yeah, uh, you know, Ryan obviously had a great year last year. The best part about him, the day after our last game, he was in my office trying to find ways to improve. And uh, that's the type of player he is. And so we'll, con we'll continue to work with him on more hang time. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest things that we're going to work on in the offseason is uh, we want to match that distance with hang time. We don't want a ball that's 70 yards and the hang time at 4.0. That's not good for our coverage units. We want to try to match that as much as possible. So we're going to be looking to get a little bit more hang time, allowing our guys to go down there and make plays. Last year, we only had four fair catches in field punts. So we want that number to be a lot higher than it was. Um, so that's one of the biggest things that we're working on with Ryan. What was it that made you want to bring Anthony Levine aboard? And how do you see his role you know, helping you out on, on special teams? Great question. Here's when I really saw Anthony Levine uh, and a guy that I always looked at as being a smart, intelligent uh, football player. We played them a couple years ago at uh, Baltimore and we ran a fake with Logan Woodside. We brought our quarterback in to play PP. Well, they didn't have a corner outside. Um, one of their guys didn't show up. Anthony was smart enough to see it. He went out there and almost broke up the pass. We still completed on him, but uh, but that's the type of player that's a smart, instinctual player. And I've heard a bunch of great things about him being a leader when he was a player there. Um, he worked in the personnel, worked in the coaching aspect, and, uh, and just a lot of people end up talking about um, what a great guy that he is, and, and players looked up to him, and uh, a lot of the people there for the Ravens thought he had a bright future, and, he, and he's been great. Players have really bought into him already, um, so I'm really excited. He's going to bring plenty of energy when you guys see him out on the practice field, which is awesome. I guess Tom Quinn, you know, been around for a long time. How, how does he maybe assist you, and what, what will his role be? Yeah, he's going on his 17th year in the league, 11 years as a special teams coordinator. Um, very similar to what Chase was as far as another guy had been a uh, special teams coordinator. So it's going to be great to bounce ideas off of him, him coming into my office a bunch, and we're just talking football scheme related uh, personnel. Obviously, he's been around the NFL for a very long time. So uh, I'm really looking forward to developing that relationship even more with him um, because a guy who has close to 17 years in the NFL, I mean, if we don't use him to our advantage, uh, that's just bad on our part. Obviously, using 180 players in two years is challenging on every coach on the staff, but you're generally working with the back half of the yeah. roster. How, how challenging has it been for you with that rotation point? Well, I think that's the best part about being a special teams coordinator. Each year you're working with new players, um, whether it's in the off season, training camp, during the season. Uh, like you said, we've used plenty of players, but I think that's the best part of my job is I get to work with a bunch of different guys and try to develop them on the field, technique, fundamentals, and then also building some leadership qualities with those guys. Uh, this year we've got you know, totally new team, basically. Uh, we lost Joe Jones, Dylan Cole, guys who have been really successful in special teams the past couple of years. So looking forward to some guys stepping up. You know, we have Morgan Cox, who's been around the league for a very long time. Luke Gifford, we signed with uh, from the Cowboys. Uh, looking for those guys to step up a little bit. And then our younger guys who did a really good job for us, Chig and Hassan Haskins, we're looking for them to take the next step up for us.